Okay, so in this video clip, I'm going to go through the Financial Times Bank Finds dataset spanning the period 2007-2015. And I'm going to set it up here in this Google Colab, which is a Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to use libraries like Pandas um, for data manipulation. And I'm going to automate some extraction of data directly from the web uh, using... Uh, pandas using beautiful soup uh, using requests um, and also we're going to try and visualize our data using matplotlib uh, do data transformation doing uh, the using commands from the pandas library and then also employ plotly for interactive capability uh, that 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 combination can actually be very powerful and you can see how you could develop a very nice report uh, again some of the logic here is to focus a little bit on the on the pandas on the beautiful soup requests matplotlib plotly uh yahoo financials why finance use those libraries just to understand a little bit the capability embedded in python and to give a sort of case develop a use case for data automation why this particular data set it's interesting, it sort of connects up uh, a lot of different um, potentially interested parties, in particular um, uh, students from law, students from accounting, students from finance, uh, data journalists, students, uh, data scientists, uh, sort of would all find this uh, reasonably useful. And the area is sort of controversial and probably uh, uh, is... Uh, an area worth um, at a policy level considering as well. So students of economics would possibly find this area uh, impinging a little bit on their uh, typical um, uh, study. Um, the Financial Times data set, so if we, if we just go to the link and bring that up and we'll go over to, it's a legacy data set um, that the Financial Times still has it makes available um, on their website. Um, and if we can come down, we can see the contributors. So Martin Stiebe and Aaron Stanley. Um, and they developed this uh, data set. It's, it's a simple enough data set, just about 250 rows. Um, it spans the period 2007 to 2015. And it looks at the fines that are applied, the major fines, in fact. So 162 billion of fines that were applied um, on the banks and legal settlements uh, made with US regulators. Um, also, probably uh, worth looking at to some degree is go through some of the visualizations here that are built. So we sort of stacked uh, bar plots and bar charts and they're actually quite insightful and I recommend taking a look at the graphics here developed by Aaron, Cara, Tom, Gina and Tom. Um, they are really nice and they tell a really magnificent story so if you really want to understand what's going on in terms of how fines have been applied on the financial institutions in this case we're going to focus on the banks um, the story here is revealed in the visualizations. We're going to try replicate a little bit the visualizations here in Python, bring you through all the techniques, bring you through how to automate all those processes. Um, but in addition, we'll scrape data from Wikipedia and from uh, Yahoo Finance just to make the, those comparisons. Um, Okay, so to download the data, just come to the CSV file here. And we'll go into our downloads to see. Now, I already downloaded one, but there's probably a second one here. So this is the second one. Let's just open this one up for a moment and take a look. And it comes down like this, so you probably have to redimension. And you have the date of the fine here in the first column. The bank, the fine was applied to, the Bank of America. The name of the regulator in question. So the Department of Justice, Housing, Fannie Mae, Federal Housing um, Finance Agency, 
and the Department of Justice, you can see, seems to be quite predominant here with the larger fines. All the fines here um, in the first few rows, they're the biggest fines. So it's in ascending, descending order. We're going from the largest to the smallest. And then we have the reason for the fine, right? So there's only five or six of these, it's probably 30 different agencies, but a few big ones. And then we have a description which is sort of uh, can be useful as well to get a sense of why the fine was applied in some of the circumstances, enveloping. Um, and then the fine magnitude 16,650 million is 16 billion. So this fine here in the second row is 11 billion, 11.6 billion, 9.3. So the fines are actually quite substantial. Um, the FTSE URL, if you check that particular column, you'll find it's it's, it's empty. So it used to contain, a, I believe, links to some information regarding the fines, I presume, to the FT stories that were run, but those are gone. So, um, okay, but that's fine. We can still work without that, but would it be nice to have those, I, but we don't. Okay, so if I go back into Colab then for a moment and run the first few queries. Now, a couple of things to say. This Financial Times Bank Finds data set is, is really providing us with a subsample of fines because um, it's for a limited period, period although uh, quite interesting period. And the data set itself has been quite influential. So you sometimes would see policy documents and papers developed by, if we take a look here at the uh, European Parliament, uh, they published a paper, they used mainly this paper to do an in-depth analysis on, on the fines that were applied and they made comparisons with, uh, with Europe. And one of, it is quite clear that when we compare fines in Europe, uh, against uh, penalties in the US, the US uh, are quite, in terms of fining the banks, they're a lot more aggressive, right? So the magnitude of fine, the weight of fines tends to be heavy. Now, this is a slightly different period, 2009 to 2016, right? But the, a lot of the fines uh, used here, the data that is used here actually is coming from the FTSE uh, data set. Um, and also, um, if you want to take a look maybe at a, a more up-to-date uh, data set, um, you can go to the violation tracker. So if you follow that link, uh, that'll bring you to the violation tracker. And then if we go again to the link here, financial services violation tracker, it brings us to uh, fines ranging from 2000 to 2023. So this is more up to date. And you can see, we're looking here at the Bank of America. So that those banks in the US that took the heaviest hits in terms of fines, right? And you can see here the number of records. If you go below the breakdown, uh, the each individual fine. So these are cumulative fines that have applied to each of the these bigger banks. And then below we can see, uh, you know, it's a, it's quite a big list. Okay, uh, there, if you want to retrieve the entire data set, I, you have to pay subscription here, but um, just in terms of getting a global overarching view of the fines for that longer period, this violation track is really excellent as well. So that's another one you could take a look at. Um, who might be interested in this field? Um, I would say certainly students of finance, of law, of accounting, uh, data scientists, um, students engaging in research. So maybe some postgraduate research, students writing dissertations, uh, producing maybe uh, papers, uh, economic students, think would have um, some um, benefit using this as well. And people just trying to build up their skill sets in 
in in Python, right? For for data exploration, data automation. Now I brought in here in the text, so this is not data being scraped in. This is just a straight copy and paste. And a, if you look at the magnitude of the fines here, Bank of America eighty seven billion, J P Morgan thirty eight thirty nine, virtually UBS. 29 billion Wells Fargo. So the, the fines have actually grown quite a bit since 2015. There's some substantial fines were applied. Uh, in the earlier stage, it would appear Goldman wasn't fined so much, then subsequently was fined quite a bit. So uh, there's some interesting dynamics here. UBS and Deutsche Bank also come in for heavy fines, even though um, possibly they're not US banks, but they operate in the US. Um, so we'll have a few things to say about that. Okay, now, uh, just, um, okay, so that's an introduction. Maybe I'll leave that there and I'll come back and uh, re record the next session. How do you get the data into Colab?